Hello everybody. I thought I would take you on a tour today of a new little tool that I built to help me label my bottles of wine. Uh, it's made quite simply, uh, all out of uh, three quarter inch uh, cabinet grade plywood. And it's uh, meant to put on two labels on opposite sides of the bottle. The jig is adaptable for different size bottles, which I'll describe in a moment. Uh, as you can see here, there are basically four support points uh, for the bottle itself. At the neck, we have two that ride right on the lip or the rim of the neck of the bottle. Uh, there's a support underneath that holds the bottle essentially level. Sorry about that. We'll get you right in the shot there. And there are two points at the back of the bottle uh, that support it uh, to keep it from shifting left and right. Uh, right there and over on that side. These two pieces here are strictly guides for the slide, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. This block over here is a stop to control the distance that the bottle is rotated. And then on this end, there's another stop for the slide and the handle on the slide. You can see that there's a piece here that provides a support for the base of the bottle. What we're looking at here are uh, screws that hold this component together permanently. These two screws here are removable so this U-shaped component can be changed out for different size bottles. You'll also note on the front here that the bottle is supported here at the top uh, to keep it from shifting up and down and it helps support it slightly left and right. This component here sets the height of the label. And I'm going to set up the camera on a tripod here in a moment and demonstrate that for you. Uh, this place makes sure that the label is square to the bottle and uh, uh, centered on the bottle. Okay, here we go. Uh, I took the bottle out so that I could show you the slide itself. Uh, it's simply a piece of uh, press board. Uh, it's about an eighth of an inch thick. And what I've done is I've attached uh, this rubberized, uh, oh, this is used for drawers, toolboxes, and so forth. That gives some traction on the bottle. It's attached to the press board using double face foam tape. You might be able to barely see that as the white strip there in the middle. Uh, I've applied graphite powder to the base here for lubrication. Also apply graphite powder here and here and up in here and here so that the bottle runs smoothly. This uh, slide, as you can see, is not permanently attached uh, it, for ease of lubrication and, and ease of use. Uh, there's no reason to have uh, top supports on it. The bottle, the bottle itself holds it in place. Uh, so the bottle is inserted like this. And with a slide all the way against the stop, you can take your label. Uh, don't know if that was in frame. You take your label. Uh, and here's the key part. You need to flex it up like this so that you can butt it to the stop here that determines the height uh, for the label placement. Now we have to assume that this is sticky back paper uh, instead of plain paper because here comes the second most critical component of applying the label. Once you have it up against the stop, you can then gently lower it to the bottle. Now if it's sticky back, it will be stuck at the, on the bottle at that point, thus controlling the alignment of the label to make sure that it's square to the bottle. And once that's stuck in place, then you can wrap the label down and smooth it out so it's on the bottle. Now you'll notice that I've placed all of my guides such that uh, they never touch the label itself. So when the bottle rotates, the label does not get scuffed by any of the guides for the bottle. Once the label's in place like this, you simply push the slide to the other stop. The bottle rotates exactly half a turn because of the predetermined distance of travel based on the diameter of the bottle, of course. And then you can proceed with your label for the back of the bottle and put that in place in the same method and place it down like that. And then you're done. Now, if you're working quickly, I recommend that you keep a finger on the top of the bottle so that it uh, doesn't move forward on you and therefore uh, ruin the placement of the label. It must stay tight to the bottom uh, stop that I showed you earlier. So sometimes just putting your finger there will help guide that. Now, uh, of course, you're going to have this clamp down to your bench, 
and you'll be working along quickly. So I find it best to do this. Once your front label is on and you slide it over, you put your back label on, you take the bottle out, the next bottle goes in, then you can put on your front label and then just simply slide it back the other way and you're ready for your rear label. So really there's only one slide per bottle. Now for different diameter bottles, it's an interesting situation. Uh, if you choose wisely, you can find bottles that have the lip here basically all the same size so that this support here will accommodate uh, many different bottles. Uh, if you also choose wisely, you can make these uh, wide enough and the bottles are close enough to the same height so that they'll both fit in the same jig. Now, of course, different diameter bottles are not going to ride on these stops properly, and they're going to shift sideways like this. I've built this jig for my largest diameter bottle that I use, and you should too. It should be set up for the largest size bottle. For this particular case, as I showed you earlier, you can undo these two screws and put in a new uh, U-shaped jig here that has uh, a different distance here for placement of the label. On this bottle, you want a little higher up, so we're going to have some wood built up here so we can place the label up on the middle of the bottle. You would also have these supports closer together. Uh, you could actually add pieces of wood here where my fingers are on the front of these so that they properly cradle the bottle. Uh, so that it stays aligned with the center of the jig. Now, uh, also have a second stop that fits over the top of this one. Just a couple pieces of wood, a piece of wood on the front, so that when you rotate, the slide stops there, uh, which is a half rotation for this diameter bottle. Uh, you could get a lot fancier, and you could have this stop be movable. I just find it's nice to have them glued down and permanent uh, so that they don't shift around during usage. If you don't have woodworking tools, I would recommend that all of these stops and guides be built out of uh, three-quarter inch poplar wood that's surfaced on four sides. That way you don't have to worry about uh, finishing wood with a nice smooth surface uh, and square edges. You can just start with a piece of plywood and use some three-quarter inch uh, poplar to build all of these other components. I'm sure somebody will immediately recognize ways to make this much better, uh, but I need to tell you a couple little things that I discovered along the path uh, to not do. What you don't want to do is have V supports here like this uh, because uh, your bottles of varying diameters on the V supports will set at different heights. And uh, larger diameter bottles will sit higher up and then the slide doesn't touch the bottle. So you want to make sure that you have a setup uh, that is based on vertical uh, supports so that the bottle can go all the way down and set on the slide. Now, you'll also note uh, that it, with one support here, for different diameter bottles, uh, if you were to look at it from the side, the bottle's tilted ever so slightly up. Uh, but that's okay uh, because there is enough uh, traction here on the amount of the slide that intersects the bottle uh, to do the rotation. The other thing that you shouldn't use are rollers uh, to support here and here like this. That's where I started out initially. Same problem as the V support. Different diameter bottles sit at different heights and they don't touch the slide. I suppose if you really wanted to have rollers or V supports you could do that, but then you're going to have to have shims for the slide to accommodate uh, the different distances off of the jig so that you're touching the bottom of the bottle. I like to keep things simple, uh, so the fewer adapters, uh, the better. And this setup really only requires uh, two pieces uh, for each diameter bottle. The, the uh, extra adapter that you would need here for smaller diameter and the extra adapter here for smaller diameter. Now, uh, before we finish up here, I wanted to show you the bottom of the jig. When I build these jigs, uh, I use a Sion Acrylate glue, sometimes called super glue, and uh, an accelerator uh, for that glue that you can get at hobby shops. I apply the glue to one piece only, apply the accelerator to the surface, and then quickly glue the piece in place by hand. Uh, now that said, that's not the strongest bond in the whole world, uh, and parts can pop loose. So what I do is I uh, put screws in the bottom here on the critical components uh, so that they don't pop loose. 
and that keeps it nice and clean. Uh, you might want to put non-skid uh, pads on the bottom uh, of your jig. Uh, I like to clamp mine to the table. I find this to be a very accurate method of applying labels. No matter how much uh, wine your crew may have had to drink, uh, they're going to uh, apply the labels with reasonable accuracy. It's inexpensive, uh, a $20 piece of wood, uh, some other parts, uh, $30, you have yourself uh, a nice labeling jig. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Uh, hope you have a chance to build one for yourself. Uh, you'll find it a great way to put your labels on. Thanks for watching. Bye.